The UX180 camera has an actual waveform monitor function built in and is pre-programmed on user button number four. You press button four, the waveform monitor will appear. If you don't know how to read a waveform monitor, it can be pretty intimidating and it's like, what is this and what am I supposed to do with it? Well, hopefully this video will teach you a little bit about how to read a waveform monitor and to know what it's telling you about your exposure so you can get even better exposure than you ever did before. Now, monitoring exposure, typically we would use the zebras. Hopefully you're familiar with the zebras. And the zebras, they show up on the screen covering up any object that is above a certain level of brightness. So a simple example, let's say something white is on the screen, like a cloud, and you set your zebras at 90. Well, it's likely on a good exposure that the zebras will not show up anywhere on the screen except on the cloud. So the, the brightness range ranges from pitch black at zero all the way up to pure pristine white at 100, or well, really technically 105, but we're just gonna call the limit 100, okay? So a white cloud might be in that top range, 90%. And that's good to know. We know that, you know, exactly where that brightness is, except we don't really have any workable information. We only really know the answer to a yes and no question when we're using zebras. And the question is, is this object at 90 or above? Yes zebras will be displayed on it. No, no zebras. That, that's all you really know about it. So if you're using the zebras to just check for clipping or something to make sure nothing ever gets up to 100, then that's a valid use for them. But what the waveform monitor is, it's like everything zebras are times a million. Because instead of just having an on or off question, is it above a certain level, it will actually tell you exactly what that level is. It'll tell you how much of the image is at that level by showing you how bright that object is when it's plotted on the waveform monitor. And also on a left to right parameter, it will actually plot out what the relative brightness is. So let's turn on the waveform monitor and we'll give you some example. First, we're gonna point at a grayscale chart because this is probably the easiest way to understand what the waveform monitor is doing. We have a range of black to white bars. And if you look at the waveform monitor, you can see that there's a solid line representing the brightness of each bar. So we have maybe a line at 10 IRE. Remember, black is zero, white is, we're calling it 100. So maybe we have a bar at 10, a bar at 20, a bar at 30, a bar at 40. And you'll see on the waveform monitor, it gets higher. Now, the waveform monitor, unfortunately, is not marked as to exactly what each line means. But I can tell you, the solid line here at the bottom is zero. The solid line in the middle is 50. The solid line at the top is 100. The dashed lines represent 10 IRE increments. So you have a solid line for zero, then you have a dashed line at 10, 20, 30, and 40, a solid line at 50, dashed line at 60, 70, 80, and 90, solid line at 100. So now, now that you know that, it would be nice if it was pre-printed on the screen so you didn't have to remember this, but now that you know that, you'll be able to tell instantly what level, what video level on our scale of zero to 100, everything is at. Now, knowing the brightness is one thing, but knowing where it is is another. So watch as we pan the camera back and forth, you'll see that the brightness bars move on the screen. That's letting you know left to right that the camera is, is plotting out that brightness. So you know pretty much as you see an object move through the screen, you also see it move through the waveform monitor. So you'll know what it is you're looking at. So because we're looking at a solid colored object, this gray bar, it's drawing a line. There's nothing varying in brightness. That, that bar vertically up and down the screen, that bar is all the same brightness. So the waveform monitor plots that brightness level, whether it's 20 IRE or, or 30 IRE, it continuously plots across the screen that it's all at that same level. What happens when you have something that's not all the same level? Well, then you'll get a variety, you'll get a big sweep of values plotted there. So let's look at a, a test chart that's a real life simulation. This is a DSC Labs Campbell's chart. And this chart is for girls of varying skin tones and a beach and clouds. So we have a wide variety represented. Let's look at what the waveform monitor looks like there. And you can see there's a huge sweeping range. Now, again, as we pan across, we can see that it moves the waveform monitor changes across the image so we can kind of pick out where some objects are. But you'll see that, for example, where the clouds are, look up here on the waveform monitor, and at the very, very top, 
there's a lot, there's a big, thick, heavy white line because there's a lot of white there. And that's showing us the peak value of what those clouds are. Now let's look at a skin tone. For example, on the Caucasian girl, these skin tones range up to 70, 75, maybe 80 IRE. So we can see this area of the screen, this area of the waveform monitor is showing us those skin tones. So now we're gonna drop the iris and you'll see what happens. And we're gonna underexpose this image. We're gonna underexpose by two f-stops. And you see that the range has compressed dramatically. The clouds are no longer hitting up around 90 or 100 where we actually want them to be. They're way down. Just at a glance, I can tell, and you with a little bit of experience will be able to tell, there's something wrong with this image. You know, we should be seeing a full, thick, broad display of waveform values that are showing us that we're using the full dynamic range of the camera. Instead, we're seeing a very compressed, shrunk down image. That's no good, that's not what you want. So here we're gonna adjust the exposure. And we're gonna bring it up where it should be. The waveform monitor fills out nicely. And we know that we have some white objects, so we're gonna bring that white up to the top of the limit. We don't need any more than this. We've got it exactly where it needs to be, and the waveform monitor helps us see where that is. Now, let me give you a few examples of how you may use the waveform monitor and make your lighting job a lot simpler. First of all, setting overall exposure. You can set the exposure by looking at the overall waveform, or maybe if you have access to a bar chart like this, you know, any DSC Labs chart has the bars arranged such that when you show it on a waveform monitor, it'll look like an X. All you have to do is put the chart in the lighting that you're going to be using and open the iris up until it makes a nice X and nothing is clipping off the top or bottom and then you're going to have pretty good exposure. Or another thing you can do with it, which I find extremely helpful, is that you can use it to check for the evenness of your lighting, especially on something like a green screen. Here, let's show you on a white card how simple it is to see. We're going to light from one side so it's lighter on the left and darker on the right just with a normal fall off of the light. When you look at it on the waveform monitor, it's obvious what you're seeing. The whole line is angled downwards towards the right, so we know that it's getting darker on the right. So if we're gonna use that for lighting a green screen, we know that we want the entire green screen to be as evenly lit as possible. So all you have to do is zoom out, get a frame of the full green screen, and then look at the waveform. What does it tell you? If you see a bunch of bumps and peaks and valleys across there, then you know that your lighting is not even. Also, the thickness of the line, what you really want to see is a thin, razor thin line running perfectly level across the green screen. That would be the most perfect green screen lighting you could ever hope for. If the line is not perfectly thin, if it's getting a little thicker, that means that the lighting level is not even at that spot. It means that there's some lighter and some darker shades, and that's why it's plotting the pixels higher and lower on the graph. Okay, so the thinner the line, the more perfectly the light is bouncing off of that green screen at every position. The thicker the line, that means that your lighting might be uneven. If you're actually seeing a peak or a valley, that means that you definitely have either a hot spot or a shadow on the screen at that point. So you can see that using a waveform monitor to set your green screen lighting can make it just, you know, so much easier to get really even lighting. Now, hopefully you can see how simple it can be to use a waveform monitor to at least get some basic information. This is a very brief introduction. I have a more detailed introduction in the book that you can download, a free download from Panasonic called The Guide to the UX90 and UX180 Cameras. Of course, the waveform monitor is only available in the UX180, but the guide covers both. So be sure to download your copy of that and check that out. And there's extensive information. If you want to learn more and more about waveform and vector scope monitors, <laughs> the internet is your friend as it is with so many subjects. But hopefully this introduction and through the guide that you can download, this will get you started and help you to understand how to use the waveform and how to use it to get better exposure in your projects. Thanks for watching. Panasonic.